Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anda Lee, and on the last pigment, we cover watercolor DIY projects. <laughs> I'm a professional illustrator and I've been working in graphic design for about 13 years. So this is my passion project. Welcome to my channel. If you have not liked and subscribed, please do. It helps me out. In today's video, we're going to be doing a watercolor butterfly and flower. It's going to be a monarch butterfly, a very, very loose rendition of a butterfly, not an anatomically correct version, but a very loose style so that you can imitate that in a very easy way. I'm going to show you the sketching process of how I did it. You're welcome to use a light box and an actual uh, reference image yourself if you want to sketch the actual flower or the, um, the butterfly. But I loose handed it and I just show you that process so you can kind of see how I do it and I'll walk you through it um, with a little bit of a voiceover and some nice music. So I hope you enjoy. We're going to get on to the video now and like I said before, I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the rest of the video. I'm just going to cover a little bit of my process before we check out to some tranquil music. I like to play the music in my videos because I really feel like when I watch other YouTubers videos, I just want something really creatively stimulating and enjoyable. So I thought I would do that in a lot of my videos because I enjoy it myself. Um, I want to cover the process so you have a little bit of an idea of what we're doing and where this piece is going. So up in the right corner, you'll see the subject photo that I'm painting. And this was something that I saw at Rogers Gardens. We were there just to pick out some plants. We moved and, you know, I wanted to get some herbs for my garden that I can use for cooking and to repel insects. So while I was there, I saw this really beautiful butterfly and it was lighting on it had lit on a flower and it was just so phenomenal. I ran up and took some photos and I thought what a great painting this would make. And you'll see that at certain points in the video I get really frustrated with the painting as I'm building up color. There's a lot I would do differently about this painting in particular. I would build up the center of the painting more. But what I did want to say is that what motivated me to finish this piece was the original idea that I had for it, was to create a pattern. So at the end of the day, I would love to go back and revisit this piece and turn it into a large um, fabric design so it would have multiple flowers and leaves and then multiple butterflies on it. That's kind of the end goal for this painting and I'm just getting it started in this video. So what I did was I sketched out the flower first. I really wanted to get an idea, uh, the perspective of the flower versus the ratio of the size of the butterfly. So I thought I would start with the flower and then size the butterfly to the flower based on the photo. I laid down a base of yellow and this was a really saturated yellow. If I could go back, I would probably not use it again. I didn't like how it turned out. The very end it looks very nice, but I felt for a base it was just too saturated. Also another thing to keep in mind when you're watercolor painting is to not use ink pens that are water soluble. Always make sure that you're using a pen that is waterproof. I didn't do that and you'll see that my colors kind of bleed uh, into the pen or vice versa and that really was disappointing. It made them a little bit muddy and I felt like I couldn't achieve really the effect I was going for because of that. But like other artists, I'm just sharing these tips because these are things that I even make mistakes doing. Just everyone who paints, like I've been painting for almost a decade and professionally like six years. So when I say even I'm doing it, it's just something that you encounter occasionally and it's good to really be mindful of it. So another thing I wanted to mention is I kept to a very limited palette for this painting. I'm making sure not to use more than five colors. 
even my black, I really did mix my own black on the palette. And then when it didn't get dark enough, I went in and used a Payne's Gray. Keeping everything very, very minimal. Um, I built up the center of the flower as the darkest part, and I really think I could have gone a lot darker with the flower, but you'll see that at the end. So I hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned. The article will have a lot more of the step-by-step -step process of how I painted this. Um, I really think that drawing and sketching out the physical shape was a great way to capture this um, butterfly. I do also think that when you execute a painting like this, you should take more time than I did. I really just wanted to paint this quickly as an exercise. I saw the, uh, the you know, the butterfly at Rogers Gardens and I thought, oh, that would make such a great painting. And I went ahead and executed it, but I would say that definitely taking more time on the painting is a good idea. This was just a quick study for me. And I'm, I'm actually working on a children's book right now, so I couldn't put a lot of time into this study. Also, using green on petals. I don't know how I feel about this. I like seeing uh, blues and more purple tones for shadows, but I wanted to experiment and see how I would feel about the green being the shadow. I think that's a great topic for another video, how to create the shadows on petals. It's a really fascinating topic to me, and it's been something that I've had to work on for the last couple years as I worked on botanical pieces. But I wanted to mention that in this painting. If you have any experience using that color on petals, please do comment down below if you like it or if you don't. I personally would switch to a different color for this. And yeah, I'm gonna check out to the music now. I hope you enjoy watching me build up the color in this piece. And yeah, enjoy the music. 